Okay, so HPV multiplication cycle handout. You can see here that uh, this is the viral particle. It's double-stranded. Now the virus has double-strand DNA, um, and it has all these. It uses the same histone molecules as our cells, and as and the same thing as SV40. So in many respects, HPV and SV40 are very very similar. However, there are some uh, minute differences between them. Okay, and that's why HPV is classified into its own um, family of viruses. Give me a moment to uh, look at my textbook. I think it will say why HPV is grouped into its own virus family. So, as you can see, HPV has, so according to textbook, the reason why it's grouped separately is that it has a bigger genome. Um, their genomes mapped differently. They, it, it's organized differently, and they share. They have a dis distinct lifestyle from um, SV40, uh, and it also just causes, um, unlike SV, or unlike polyoma viruses, um, a lot of the. Uh, Papilloma viruses do cause um, diseases. So, if you recall polyoma viridae um, from lecture, uh, if you recall from lecture polyoma viridae, a lot of what it does is just, you know, it just grows and divides, doesn't really do much to the host, doesn't really harm us in any way, um, I guess, except jack our, you know, our nucleotides and so forth to multiply. That's uh, it's that's it. No like scary warts and so forth. Sometimes you might get you know a rota. Um, no, that's real virus. Never mind. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it's nothing too bad. Uh, the only time that it's bad with polyoma viruses is if you get something like a polyoma virus from a you know like a if we got. SV40, we would get tumors, but if we were the monkey, nothing too bad. Um, whereas human, something like papilloma viruses, uh, you might get infected by, you know, us as humans, we get infected by human papilloma viruses, uh, and we still get tumors. So, you know, it's stuff like that that makes papillomavirus virus different from um, polygoma viruses. Okay, so again, you see here on the site on the handout, the here's the virion. The capsid is made of L1. The capsid proteins are L1 and L2. Okay. Um, now the virion. It, the virion is a costahedral naked virus. Um, it's 55 nanometers in size, and it interacts with the alpha-6, beta-4 integrin molecules in order to enter the cell um, through receptor-mediated endocytosis. Once it's in the cell, it has a partial encoding. So this is the partially uncoded vi virus, and then finally it has a full encoding. You, see, you can see similar to how um, polyoma viruses work, it has um, early genes that are expressed and late genes that are expressed. But instead of the expression being bidirectional, um, it is now unidirectional. So polyoma viruses have bidirectional um, expression uh, with you know half the genome being um, expressed early and the other half being expressed late. However, this one, you have expression, you have, you know, transcription happens in one direction only, and you have early and late um, transcription and translation in a way that, um, in this case, HPV, HPV um, well, in this case, with, pap with papillomaviruses, the different um, like the early genes and the late genes are separated by um, polyadenylation, uh, polyadenylated sequences, so just poly A's. And you can see that right here, AE and AL. 
AE separates all these early genes, you know, E6, E7, E1, E2, E4, E5. Um, those are separated from the L1, L, L2 by this AE. And this end of L2 is separated from the E's, from the E genes by this AL. So, early transcription uses RNA polymerase 2, right there. Um, now, the thing is, you can see here, you, you might be wondering, shouldn't E1 and E2, ice for me, e, shouldn't E1 and E2 be the first genes that are, are transcribed? Why is it E6 and E7? Well, it's because E6 and E7, um, they are genes that bind to the tumor suppressor genes to drive the cell to grow and make DNA and make proteins. Now obviously you can, well, you'll most likely see that, hey, we saw this theme somewhere else too, right? Yes you did, uh, yes we did, in polyoma viridae. Um, remember, to, remember, if you recall the T antigen the large T antigen in polyoma viruses bind to our retinoblastin and P53. Um, but because this is papillomavirus, it doesn't use T antigen, it uses E, um, like E genes, you know, quote unquote E6 and E7. E6 binds P53, and E7 binds our uh, retinoblastin. And just a quick summary, when P53 is bound, the cell cannot kill itself. And the cell cannot kill itself when it's when a virus is infecting it and multiplying, then it lets the virus um, replicate its DNA and make pro viral proteins willy-nilly. E7 on the other, and E7 binds retinoblastin. And when retinoblastin is bound, uh, we see cell growth is increased. Okay, so you see you have transcription of this E6 and E7 gene, splicing of the RNA transcript, transport out into cytoplasm, so that you can make your E6 and E7. You also, again, you make you also. I know I said that E6 and E7 came first, but at the same time, after you made the E6 and E7, you also make the E1, E2. E4, E5. So here you have the proteins and so forth. Um, now, E1, what E1 does, I have it right here. E1 is a DNA helic, uh, helicase. Uh, E2 binds to vir viral DNA and allows. Uh, allows the segregation of viral gene viral genomes viral DNA from host DNA um, and e5 uh, stimulates cell proliferation uh, it's also it also um, alters uh, plasma membrane receptor function um, dr. Samuel did not say in depth what you know what changing the plasma membrane receptor function does um, so that's something you'll, you have to ask him or figure out on your own unfortunately I don't know it I don't know everything okay but moving on so you see here the E6 and E7 goes back into the nucleus uh, so that it can find drive forward um, the DNA replication uh, so you have DNA replication of this entire genome and so forth and oh hey look now you have a bunch instead of only having one copy of your genome you have thousands upon thousands of copies of your genome and from there you can do late transcription and because you have thousands of copies of your genome you can make a really big amount of your caps of proteins in a short span of time you see late transcription same thing make your RNA transcript splice it transport out transport out your RNA transcript translate um, now you make all these uh, caps of proteins and so forth and you just follow the line and oh hey look L1 L2 is right here hmm 
I have a bunch of capsid proteins. I have a bunch of viral genome. What should I do? Duh, obviously, assemble the virus. Okay, now you made the virus in the nucleus. Now take, get that, get that thing out into cytoplasm. Once you're in the cytoplasm, um, just release, release the viruses. Okay, now a few things. Um, it may take a while to notice, and that's completely fine. First of all, you'll probably be asking, where's E3? The thing is, we don't know what E3 does, so Dr. Sierra's didn't include it in the handout. And you may be asking, what does E4 do? Well, it's suspected, it's hypothesized that E4 um, helps the virus mature and release itself. So that's why Dr. Samuels put E4 right here with a question mark. Uh, it's exp This is the, yeah, so that's E4. So this is the um, papilloma viridae multiplication handout. I hope this helps. Uh, let's move on to the next handout.